My studio has a metal roof. Hi, it's Simon. Today I'm going to show you busy people and Notion newbies out there how to get started in Notion quickly and easily so that you can fast track that steep learning curve and harness the power of Notion to organise your life a little more easily. Now let me tell you, as a Notion ambassador, I get a lot of messages from people saying that they want to try Notion to escape that overload and get organised, but that learning Notion itself is too overwhelming when you start. Well, I totally hear you. It can feel complex and time consuming to get going. Well, this video is my answer to that problem. By the end of it, you will have fast tracked the essential learning that unlocks the key things in Notion and built yourself some simple and powerful tools you can use today. Now, I've split this into three areas, getting started, using databases for task projects, notes, and all the rest. And finally, the power of customizing from templates for your needs. And it's raining a lot. Can you hear that? That's the most rain I've seen in so long. It was the aesthetic simplicity of Notion that drew me to it in the first place. And so if you can learn the basics, formatting and just creating things in it, that will go a long way to creating a workspace that you want to spend time in. So these are the real keys to it that you should focus on when you first get started. So the first thing you want to do is open a free account and create a new page. So if you see in your menu here, you can go new page. Just start there. Now, obviously you can see I've built loads of stuff, but we don't need to worry about that for now. And the first thing I would do is play. So in this space, if you type forward slash, you will see options, forward slash anything. For some good aesthetics to start, you might wanna play with headings. So you can do this by going H1 and putting in a heading. You can do forward slash divider to create divisions. One of my favorites is to do forward slash col and create two columns. And every single block can be moved by just doing this. Other things you might like to play with, with this. If you scroll down, you can see everything in there. You might want to do a bulleted list, quotes, various toggle lists. Toggle lists are actually really good because you can place things within and collapse them. So in my simplified Notion template, I have actually done this to reveal different pages and it gets really exciting really quickly. But when you're playing, one of my favorites is a call out. This is great for aesthetics because you're able to set, select an icon uh, or emoji into it and create a menu page. And within a call out block, you can then drop another block. And my favorite thing to know about for navigation within a notion on a page is to do at, and you can at mention any person, page, whatever you want to do. So for example, if I wanted it to be my journal page that I created, I can find my journal and drop a link in and then if I click it it'll jump straight to that page. Every block can be edited by clicking here you can select things like colors and you can do things like turn into and you can change one thing into another. Another way to do that is to do forward slash turn and you can change whatever you want it to be into different things. Pretty cool. Now, let's not forget that Notion is a, an aesthetic space. Make sure you add an icon, either a customized one, like my Notion icon pack that you can download, or an icon that exists within Notion by selecting your color of choice and dropping in an icon. And of course, add a cover so that you can click here. This is really cool. If you go to Unsplash and search for stuff, you can do whatever you like. For example, paint. A final trick for formatting is to remember that you can click in this top corner and customize the page, but one of the best things to do is go to full width and it just gives you a lot more space to play and create different views and designs. So I might quickly turn this into my home page. And there's a great example of how quickly you can get used to editing and making things work. So this all looks good, but without trying out the wonderfully creative world of databases, 
you'll always be stuck on using Notion as a set of simple documents. So let's add a database using forward slash data. And you can either create a full page that will sit as a new page within your home screen. So this might be tasks database. And maybe I call this system databases, or you can set up your database as a forward slash inline database, and you will just see it turn up on the page. Now, both are the same thing. My favorite approach is to build a database down here and then create views of them, which we'll come to in a moment. But for now, let's take a little look at our tasks database. Now, first of all, with databases, let's not get overwhelmed. They can seem like a lot, but you can actually start really simply. In databases, you can pick a property type and just add new properties and build what you like. So I can click on this button, it will bring up the properties list, and these are all the options that we've got. And you've even got things like AI options within Notion. Let's save that for another day. So for my tasks database, I would like to add a status I'm gonna drop that in here for the task. I would like this one to be daily priority and I can edit the property and I can add options within it here. So for example, I might wanna do top of mind, morning, evening. And you can order these tags so that they order as you want them. Pretty simple. So there's my daily priority. When I click in here, I can say oh, I want it to be top of mind. Uh, now, if I wanted to change what the property is, I can click edit property and I can make this a, for example, a select rather than a multi-select. And that means I can only pick one, which is quite good for that. And for my task database, I'm gonna change this to be task. I would like to also add a date property. Another place you can do this is clicking into here and selecting properties and add a new property, and I would like to add a date property, and I'm gonna call that due date when I wanna do the task. And that opens up Notion's calendar system. Let's add one more property, because my favorite feature in this is also to add a button. And this button can be something like this, completed. And when the button is clicked, I can add an action, edit the status property to be done. So when I click this, it marks it as done. So for example, I can set my due dates of when I want to do things and I'll know when they're coming up. So there's a tasks database really simply created, but you might want to go a bit further and use these two buttons here. And the power of these buttons in a database is that they will allow you to sort the order of how you view something and also filter things. So for example, I can set my sort by due date. And if I change this one to this, you'll see that it's at the top of the list. That's quite nice. I might want to filter. And a really great way to filter a database view would be to select filter, select by status, and where status is not complete. And that means that when I mark something as complete, it disappears from the view. Command Z, undo it and see it again. So filters and sorts are really fantastic and really easy to use. And as you start to play with databases, you'll start to see there are loads of other great things like group where you might want to group by the due date. And then you can see things in these little drop down menus of today and so on and so forth. Select none and it will go back. So loads of ways to play with it. But the final thing you need to know about databases is to create views. So here I'm going to do a heading and I'm going to call this inbox. And here, if I do forward slash view, I can select a view of a database. Now, with this, it allows you to create focused views of data in each database without affecting the original. It's great to make something like an inbox. So I'm going to select a table view. And databases can be viewed in loads of different types of views. And then it will bring up this database view and it says I need to select a source. I'm going to select my task database. And there it is. Now, if I rename this as tasks to process, I can change the icon, give it a little inbox tray. I've got my source. And here, if I now change the filter that we 
copied from the previous one, I can change the filter to be only stuff that is not started. So if I turn this one into in progress, it disappears from the inbox. Pretty cool, right? And if I want to see today's tasks, I just repeat the same job. Today's tasks, forward slash view, table view. I'm going to select the task database. And this one I'm going to call this week, add the logo. And here I can filter this one. And we can even use things like advanced filters and go where status is not done and where due date is relative today to today, this week. There you go. Look at that. We've got a filtered view of this week's tasks. And this is how quickly you can create views using databases. So that is database basics, but they get really cool when you start to use relations, the single best feature of them in my opinion. So let me show you how easy it is to create a relation in about two minutes and you'll have a tasks and projects management system. So first I wanna create myself a projects database. I can do that really simply. I'm gonna go here and do forward slash database. You kind of type what you want. I want a full page. I'm gonna go in and call it my projects database. Let's just customize it. I'm keeping mine clean and simple. And here I'm going to name it as project. We probably want to change this one into a, let's say, a type. Let's make this one a date. And we'll call this start and end. And why don't we create ourselves a status for this as well for projects. But with this one, when it says in progress, I'm going to edit that to say live just an idea and done. That works really nicely. And you can add multiple options within it. So you might want, when you've got in progress, to have live and you might want to have planning, for example. So there's our project database. Now the cool thing about this is I can now create other views within a database and I'm going to create a timeline view. So when I go to my project's main view and go, let's call it my side hustle, I'm going to set a start and end date. So I want it to start on the 1st of April. I'm going to add an end date and I want it to end end of June, say. When I go to the timeline, I can now see my side hustle in that view. And within views, you always have the option to show what properties you want to show. So click to properties and you can show the status. There you go, a timeline view again rename it. So we've got a really simple projects page. So if we now go back home, I'm going to open this up and in this side, I'm going to do forward slash view and I'm going to select a gallery view of my projects database. I want a new empty view and there are my projects. Again, I can within this view, click on the menu, show the properties that I want to show. I can show the start and end date there as well. There you go, you get the idea. Now we want to link these up. So I'm going to also bring in here the projects database and just bring the main view here so we have it. Now for the cool bit, I want to link the two together. And this is where real change can happen in Notion. So I'm going to add a new property and we're going to go down to relation. Select relation and I want to relate the projects database to the tasks database and it will bring up this view. If I click this, it will show the tasks and projects. I'm going to name this related tasks. In the task database, I'm going to call it related projects and add the relation. Don't be overwhelmed because it gets really good from here. Now, now that we've done that, we have related tasks here and in our task view, related projects. It means that meeting with an editor, I can click on related projects and select the project I want to link it to. Now, my favorite thing to do with a task and project manager is to filter the inbox. This filter, I'm going to turn it into an advanced filter. I can add a filter rule where related project is empty. And that means that when I relate something in my inbox to a project, it disappears from the system. And there, 
I'll be able to see my tasks only down here, but this time related to the project. That is the power of a relational database. You can mess around with your formatting as much as you like. Here in my essential Notion task manager, I've done just that. I've got a week view, I've got a menu where I can look into my projects dashboard and see my projects. There's loads you can do. So if you wanna go further with this or just see what's possible, this is a free Notion template download that you can grab on bettercreating.com, sign up to the mailing list and you'll receive this. You can duplicate that template into your workspace and see what's possible or just use it. So that's formatting shortcuts and basic database functions. But Notion's pretty boring if we just stop at a to-do list. I would say that the real power of Notion is in the world of templates, where you can go down to the bottom of the side menu, select templates, and there are hundreds of great options for you to duplicate into your workspace and use it as a basis for building in Notion. There are endless options, particularly if you search under particular areas. There's a reading list, there's a journal, there's loads of things, blog posts, mood boards, trip planners. From here, we can simply pick one we wanna use and get the template. I can add it to a space, there it is. And then I can just drop it into my home there's the page. I can even move it up into my main menu and I can click through to it, edit it as I want to see it. So I might want to now see a table view and create that, improve it as I want. I can go back to my home. This is a great way to drop it as a database down the bottom and then get a view of it. Do view, a list view, and let's find the journal. I might move my projects underneath here Maybe I want my system databases on this side. That's how easy it is to drop in ready-made elements and edit them to your needs. But you can go a step further. We click back into here and go down to templates. You can also find more templates in the Notion templates gallery. And there are loads of great examples. Let's have a look for a resonance calendar. That's Ali Abdul's template. Love it and you can simply click through to it. There it is, I can see it. And if I want to duplicate it, I can click duplicate, select the workspace I want it to go into. And it is as easy as that to add it to your system. I can drop it into my home, click in, and maybe with this resonance calendar, I want to rename this my notes and clippings and away you go you have yourself your notes and clippings and that is the power of templates to make your own space exactly as you want it now the final trick to really master notion is to use database templates where you can create a default page which will give you the view that you want and they will essentially turn a page into a focused view so that you don't have to start from scratch every time. But for that, I recommend jumping into my task and project builds where you can learn all the powerful features of Notion customization, creating what has come to be known as a digital second brain, a place to hold and organize your ideas so that you can focus on taking some action. With a little play and practice, you'll be inventing and building systems tailored to you that make life so much easier. And for those of you thinking, but why spend all that time building a productivity setup rather than just doing the work? Well, trust me, honestly, I found a few days or hours building something here can transform the efficiency when you come to just use it. Otherwise, you could just learn the basics on this video and leapfrog the build process by downloading one of my ready-made templates that use these principles and you can go straight past the designing because I've done it for you. Ah, So we've learned how to start using Notion for getting organized, but if you don't understand the thinking and strategies behind this kind of personal organization, then the tools are totally useless. So I recommend watching this video next where I share the productivity strategies that have had the biggest impact on my life and helped me build a successful business from scratch, from home. It would be awesome if you subscribed, amazing if you left a like and a comment, and well, I'd better get back to creating. See ya.